Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel. My name is Mira and in today's video we'll be deciding what is the best true spider for beginners. And if you guys have been following the channel for a while, you guys know that I have around 100 spiders and around 60 of them are true spiders and I have a nice variety. I have like 8 different huntsmen, 2 different RSUs, jumping spiders, net casting spiders, a lot of spiders, a lot of true spiders. Unbelievable! Well, let's break it down and let's see which one is the best for beginners. And I think you will be surprised with number one because it's not a huntsman and it's not a jumping spider. Number five is gonna be Capianius and basically you can get any Capianius wandering spider on the market. Their care is very similar. These are very hardy spiders and they are not medically significant so you don't have to worry about that. They are not those dangerous Brazilian wandering spiders, the Phoneutria. These are Capianius. Their bite is not as dangerous but of course you wanna keep your fingers away as with every spider. What I like about them, they are appealing. They are nice looking spiders. They have a lot of different colors. You can get a Capianius, Capianius Getazi that is gonna be orange or it's gonna have like a red fangs a lot of different colors their care is very easy set them up arboreal put a little bit of a substrate in there about one to two inches that you keep damp something to climb on something to hide in and they're gonna reward you with the craziest hunts they sometimes drop down like a ninja and they grab their prey from the top which is so much fun to watch and in this clip we're watching Capianius Gatazi feeding on a beetle and that just gives you a little bit of an idea about the variety of food they have in the nature. When it comes to food for true spiders you kind of want to give them a lot of variety because they will reward you with a nice large size. If you're gonna keep them just one type of food they are more likely to grow smaller. That is just an experience that I have and something that I've been talking about with other keepers. So this is not like a scientific fact. Yo, science. But we came to conclusion that clean bloodline and variety of food will help you to keep your spiders nice and large and healthy. Here we're watching large female Capianius cosinus. The common Capianius on the market are Capianius salei, Capianius getazi, and sometimes you get this cosinus. But these are not very common, at least not in the United States. And the final thing that I'm showing you is actually wandering spiders mating, which I thought was really interesting, so I didn't want to skip that. And number four is gonna be jumping spiders. Surprise, huh? And that is because I don't think they're as easy to keep as some of the spiders that I have on number one, two, and three. Because jumping spiders, for one, if you're a beginner, they are kind of short-lived. The females will only last for a year, maybe two years, and that's about it. That's if you're lucky. Males are gonna last a lot less. And I know that that's kind of a heartbreaking for a lot of people when they get a spider and their pet dies like after a few months. And what you're watching here is my Hylos DRD, and you can see how friendly they are because because they are, um, I'm trying to pair them up so you can see them, they like jumping from hand to hand and they and climbing around. They also have their cool ritual dance. This dance helps them basically identify that their partner is not a meal, but it's a partner for mating. Mm -hmm. And it is really cute, especially if you ever seen peacock spiders, peacock jumping spiders from Australia. They are tiny, but they have a really colorful tail that they expand and show it to the female, and then they do a little ritual dance. If you haven't seen it, I don't have that footage because I don't keep those spiders and don't live in Australia, but they are really easy to Google. So just Google peacock spider mating dance, and you will be rewarded if you haven't seen it with some nice drum and some nice colors. When it comes to jumping spiders care, I'm gonna talk about the Hylos DRD here that you guys are watching. Basically, you wanna keep them arboreal, you wanna give them a lot of places to hide, a lot of places to climb. Jumping spiders get stimulated by colors, so it won't hurt if you put like a live plant in there or something colorful, they'll probably really enjoy it. You wanna feed them once, maybe sometimes twice a week when they juvenile. Flying insects do really well, but also something like a smaller crickets is gonna do well. You don't want anything too big so it doesn't bite your spider back, but the crickets are fine because they climb around and they're easy to find for your jumpers. And these spiders also come from tropic, so you wanna have around one to two inches of substrate that you're gonna keep constantly damp. And I also like to mist and I mist away from the spiders because they have open lungs and you don't want any water to get in there. Plus jumping spiders are actually kind of terrified of water. And it always makes me really sad when I see those pictures of jumping spiders by their with a little droplet on their head because I know that that's not something that they enjoy. People just love those pictures because you know jumping spiders they're so appealing, they have these beautiful big eyes, they kind of like a cartoony. And the water droplet is like a see-through and shiny you know so it makes for a nice picture but but it's actually not a very ethical thing to do in my opinion 
Let's move on to number three, and that's gonna be a Resu Spider. Their carry is really easy, but the reason why I didn't put them any higher than number three is because of their price. In the United States, they are very expensive. The cheapest one I've ever seen was around 50, 55 dollars, but usually they go for 100 or more dollars. One banana, Michael, what could it cost? 10 dollars? So that is very expensive for the United States, but their care is very easy. You wanna keep these guys dry, I keep them in a little acrylic box where I have a few twigs and I have a lot of moss. They do drink, contrary common belief that they don't drink at all, they like it completely dry. So around once a month I spray one side of the wall of the enclosure. They are so much fun to watch hunt and they're almost like a little kitties too. There's another spider that is even more like a cat and we're gonna talk about it a little bit later. I can tongue feed them, they will take food from tongs, but it takes them a little bit to warm up to it. You can see sometimes when they open up their fangs it's almost like really like a little cat, like they like, you know, it's like a roar. When it comes to food I give them large variety, different types of cockroaches, blue butterflies, crickets, basically anything that they can overpower. Their hunting technique is really fun, if you guys haven't seen it I don't want to about it again check it out in one of my older videos we have plenty of those with rs spiders Number two, and that's one of the latest additions to Spider Cafe, and that is a Lynx Spider. And the reason why I decided to go with this one as a number two and not number one is just because they are rare in the United States. They are really hard to find, and this is the second time I see them in the last maybe two, three years. And the first time they were just outrageously expensive. This time we got an import, and I got them for a good price, and I got five of them. They turn out to be four females and one male. So I'm really feeding up the female, and I'm hoping that I'm gonna pair them up and it's gonna go well. When it comes to feeding, these spiders are a lot of fun. You can tongue feed them, that's gonna work really well. You don't have to worry about them letting the prey go because some of the huntsmen, they will bite it if you tongue feed them, the prey, and once they feel there is a little bit of a resistance, they just let go. Especially my bogies, they're really hard to tongue feed. Another thing that I want to say about them is they are called lynx spiders for a reason. The lynx in English is basically a cat, it's like those cats that live in a forest, those smaller cats, and these spiders hunt exactly like them. They either wait and hide and wait for the prey to make a bad move and then they pounce on it, but they are also very capable of following the prey and kind of stuck in it. And what I found really interesting is when they are ready to hunt, sometimes their petty pulps, sometimes their petty pulps are moving like a little tap and I don't know why they do it, if they can sense something, but for me it just seems like they are excited and it is really cool to watch. And the spiders that you're watching in my videos are Peucetia lucasi, so these are green links from Madagascar. And in this clip you guys can see so how she's gonna actually follow the fly and hunt the fly down. And you can also get Peucetia viridans, which is a green link spider from the United States. And interesting fact about those is they can actually spit venom, kind of like cobras. And really far, they can spit it like a feet away from them, which I think is really cool. I've never seen them do it. I encounter them in the nature all the time, I take pictures of them, I get really close. But wow, that was a cool takedown. I've never seen that happen. Number one true spider for beginners. Dun dun dun, drum beat. I decided to go for this one because it's always available, it is adorable, and it is also excellent hunters, and you will see your spider all the time. So without further ado, it's gonna be a wolf spiders. You can get your hands on many different species because wolf spiders are distributed on most continents so you can actually even grab one from the nature. If you are a beginner sometimes I have people asking me like what would you recommend for our child you know we just want something easy for them something to begin with. Wolf spiders are excellent. They are not very handleable because they are super food oriented so anything that like touches anywhere nearby they jump and bite. <laughs> so they are not very handleable but they are their care is really easy they're easy to find and they are actually inexpensive so if you want to buy one that is captive bred which is always recommended they're not gonna break your bank and I already mentioned that these spiders are absolutely beautiful they have huge eyes so I always say that wolf spiders and rasu spider give jumping spiders run for their money when it comes to cuteness but being very cute that doesn't make them any less of a hunter because these guys are crazy they will jump they will stack their prey they are just super food oriented and it's one of the spiders that i maybe feed twice a week and they never put on any weight they just stay nice and slim and always ready to eat 
when it comes to their prey it's always recommended something smaller but they will overpower large invertebrates you just don't want to you just don't want to give them anything that could bite back like crickets and they are incredibly fun to watch you can totally they are easy to tongue feed they always gonna do something they always gonna reward you with something crazy like a backflip or jump or anything just they're just very acrobatic spiders When it comes to their care, it's also really easy. They don't need much substrate, but some of them will borrow, so it doesn't hurt if you give them, you know, one to two inches of substrate. And basically these are mainly terrestrial, so you just kind of want to give them a little bit more of a ground space. Some live plants and some hideouts, those won't hurt because, you know, sometimes during the day they go and hide. But these guys are not completely nocturnal, they will stay out sometimes during the day as well. And in this final feeding clip, it's not very good, but I just wanted to show you the jump. Since then, I ended up rehousing her because I put her in something bigger. Even though it felt pretty big, when they can jump from one side to another like that, I felt like she can do something, she can get something bigger. Alright guys, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. We are having our baby delivered next week, so I probably won't be uploading as much as I used to, but I'll still try to stay on top of it and keep the channel updated maybe like once every two weeks. I'll do my best. I hope you enjoyed this list. If you did, hit the like button, hit the notifications button, and please don't forget to subscribe. I will see you soon. Alright, ciao. Makes things even worse